So my name is Paddy Connolly. I'm the CEO of Inclusion Ireland. I joined Inclusion Ireland in May 2012. And, and it's a real privilege to work here and, and to work with the persons with the disability and families that, that I come into contact every day. So we've decided this year to go from a paper annual report to one that's completely in video. Um, and the report has been developed, as you'll see when you're watching it, by our self-advocacy subcommittee. You know, I'd like to thank the members of the self-advocacy subcommittee for making it. You know, they've done all the editing, they did all the recording, they did the interviews. Um, and as I say, it's, it's an important way for us to kind of try and make uh, the information about our organisation as accessible as possible to people. As an organisation over the last, you know, in, in 2015 in particular, but over the last couple of years and into this year, we've been looking at what are the kind of key issues for us as an organisation that we want to bring about real change in relation to. And one of the ways of doing that is, is developing what we call a theory of change. Um, and to bring about those changes, there are other changes. So there's a series of steps that the organisation has identified to bring about its ultimate goal of equality of human rights for persons with an intellectual disability and their families. Um, and that has fed into work like our Disability Manifesto for Equality and Human Rights. And we've recently just uh, finished um, an Inclusion Ireland Equality and Human Rights Statement. What you see emerging is a kind of a coherent um, approach to achieving change at a national level across a number of government departments. My name is Tom Healy, Chairperson of Inclusion Ireland. These are our highlights for 2015. We are collaborating with Down Syndrome Ireland and Irish Autism Action on the Connect Family Network which is bringing about greater participation of persons with disabilities and their families on the design and delivery of disability services and supports. Our self-advocacy committee is a subcommittee of the Board of Inclusion Ireland. In 2015, Inclusion hired Catherine O'Leary to support Martin and Phil on the Board of Directors. We won a National Adult Literacy Agency, NALA, Plain English Award 2015 for our booklet Sexual Assault Support and Information at the Plain Gala Dinner at the Jameson Distillery in Dublin in September. We welcome the historical enactment of the Assisted Decision Making Capacity Legislation Bill 2013 by President Michael D. Higgins at Horace and Oakthorne on the 30th of December 2015. Developing accessible information is a key part of Inclusion Ireland's work. So last year we carried out some work on our website just to give it a more accessible feel. So it now has a number of accessibility features. The first one of these is, is that it will respond to the width of, of your screens. The second one is that we've installed TextHelp's Browse Aloud app. And the third one is that we've now used icons on our website. So it's very easy for people to navigate around the website and for them to find the information that they're looking for. Inquiries and requests for information, advice and advocacy support remain the lifeblood of the organisation. Last year we received over 1,200 unique inquiries. We supported people on a number of issues including decision making, personal finances, housing, education, employment and access to justice and services. We also provided people with one-to-one -one support on issues such as complaints and appeals to the HSC, the Ombudsman, Equality Tribunal and the Courts. It is key that the capacity of parents and family members is supported. We listen to the concerns of family members, give them advice, support family advocacy, promote campaigns and bring family members together through a number of national events and seminars throughout the year. Family Network. Greg. Hey, Aaron. Could you please tell me about the Family Network? Part of the work that Inclusion Ireland does is called the Connect Family Network. It's a piece that we do in partnership with Down Syndrome Ireland and with Irish Autism Action. Um, at the moment, there's approximately 150 or 60 disability support groups in Ireland, and it's about giving all those groups information. We've, you know, we conducted a survey at the very beginning. We found out there were a lot of deficits for folks, especially with a lot of the change that's going on within the HSE. Um, so we've we've aimed to provide information to people on that. It's in physical format. We also have it on our web page. We have a dedicated web page that's hosted on the Inclusion Ireland website. And the other piece is that we're going around the country. We're speaking to people at public meetings. Um, we've hosted some of them here in our offices in Inclusion Ireland in Dublin. We've also been to Drogheda, Waterford, Kilkenny. We've been down to Limerick and Tullamore.
Another part of this is that not only do we want to give information to people, but we want to get information from people. It's to give people a voice into policy formation in Ireland. People experience disability services and they've had very little say up till now. It's about getting the family voice in there to ensure that when their family member experiences a service, it's suited, you know, it's, it's suited to the individual needs. This is an example of how Inclusion Ireland responded to a concerned parent who attended one of our Connect Family Network meetings last year. Anne has an adult daughter who has a severe intellectual disability and she lives in a residential service. Anne was given, a te was given a tenancy contract to sign for her daughter. Anne was very worried as it said the service reserved a right to remove her daughter from the service and that if she did not sign the contract she may have to find an alternative accommodation. Inclusion Ireland advised Anne the contract would have no legal standing as one adult cannot sign a contract for another. We also directed Anne to her free legal advice clinic. Change the Places Campaign 2015 Hi, I'm Anne, this is Ailish, and we've just been using the um, Change in Place toilet facility here in Trinity. I've been on the Inclusion Ireland working group, which is uh, trying to promote the rollout of facilities such as this throughout the country. Uh, Inclusion Ireland have been doing great work highlighting the need, which is really what's needed because people aren't aware of the limitations that the lack of facilities like this, uh, how it impacts on the lives of people like Eilish and her family, because we can't go out for more than a few hours at a time. This has made a great difference to our lives, because um, heretofore we couldn't go into town for the day or go shopping, because Eilish can't use a normal disabled toilet. And lots of people don't realise that some people need an extra uh, facility in the disabled toilet. So this has it all. Uh, it's a great advantage because we can go shopping or go for lunch and go to the gallery. This is an example of how Inclusion Ireland responded to a concerned parent who rang our office looking for some information last year. John is a young boy who was in primary school. The school told his mum he would have to go home at 12.30 each day as there had been some issues in his class. John was missing out on more than two hours of school each day. His mum asked the school to allow John to access a full school day but the school refused. Inclusion Ireland advised John's mum that this was a suspension by another name and could be appealed formally but to address this with the school on an informal basis first. When John's mum approached the school with this information, they agreed to allow John access a full school day. It is a strategic priority of Inclusion Ireland to build on the capacity of people with an intellectual disability to speak for themselves and to represent their collective will. We do this through the Self-Advocacy Resource Unit, through our Self-Advocacy Subcommittee, and by hosting numerous training and workshops throughout the year. Support for the board members. Hello, my name is Martin. Hello, my name is Phil. We are self advocate members who are members of the board of Inclusion Ireland. We found it difficult to understand information at, at, at the board meetings. We spoke with because you would be involved fully. Inclusion Ireland agreed to support. It is important to support us. We decided what good support would look like. We wrote a job description. We interviewed the people that applied for the job. We chose Catherine O'Leary to support us. After a while, we reviewed how the support was working. The information for meetings has been made more accessible to us. And we meet before meetings and after meetings. And to make, make sure we understand what's going on. We report to the board about what our self-advocacy subcommittee are working on. And we feed back to the subcommittee about the work of the board. And we are still learning how to make this work for everyone. December 3rd, 2015 was the International Day for People with Disabilities. The team of the day was inclusion. 
We asked ourselves what inclusion means for us. We decided to make a video to show what it means to us. Inclusion means living on every, an everyday life like everyone else. This video had over 500 views on our YouTube channel and 200 views on our website. The Irish Attractive View Group made a document called Building Confidence, Improving Lives and Delivering Change. Now, Inclusion Ireland made their document easy to read. We hosted workshops so that people could give feedback on the document. Over 136 people attended the workshop in 30 locations around the country. Inclusion Ireland supported the review group to get an independent person to write everything down and make sure that the review group got all the important information. The people who took part were paid for their time during the workshops. Making a will. We have our own Making a Will webpage at inclusionireland.ie forward slash making a will. The people who contact us are people with intellectual disabilities who want to make a will, want to plan for their future, or are sometimes having difficulty in accessing a solicitor. Families too contact us as they're worried about making provision for their sons and daughters and making sure they think about the future in a way that benefits the whole family. During the year, Inclusion Ireland took part in a Making a Will project alongside partners in PILA, LinkedIn and Mason Hayes and Curran. The project aim was to address the legal need relating to making a will for people with disabilities and their families. Solicitors involved in the project received training on legal issues as well as issues relating to intellectual disabilities, communication and accessibility. Over the past 12 months, a number of individuals with support needs have been supported to access legal advice relating to making a will and if they so wish to have a will made. My money events. Over the past 12 months, interest in making a will has remained steady and talks on wills have taken place all across Ireland. Further training on intellectual disability in general, assisted decision making, financial planning, sexual relationships in the law, social inclusion, train the trainer and money were the most popular training events. We visited Dublin, Loud, Kilkenny, Cork, Athlone, Limerick, Galway, Wexford, Offaly, Kerry, Sligo and Kildare. One big area that we delivered training on surrounded the My Money project. This project involved focus groups around Ireland, hearing about what people wanted to know about managing their own money. We took what we learned from these focus groups and we designed a training plan. We decided that the trainers should include people with disabilities who had experience of managing their own money. We had training workshops across Ireland and people heard about money, what money was, why money is important, and also heard about banking, making decisions about money, and how to get support around money. Capacity Act 2015. Why are you happy that the Literacy Act is going? People won't be deep feeling it takes a bit of a right over their lives. Great. Um, what's it like being awarded a court? It's horrible. Like, you can't go to the doctor, you can't do anything, you have no say over anything. So, um, are you happy that the new Assistive Decision Making Act is coming in? Yeah. It should be good, like people have say if they want to move house or whatever, they can just do it. And why is support <clears throat> important for people in their lives? When you have a disability, everyone needs support, but like simple things like going to your doctor or whatever, you know, it's important to have support in your life. And what support look like for you in your life? The way it works in my life is if I have a problem or just simple little things, if you're unsure about something, you can go, I, I can go talk to my aunt and my cousin and we come up with a solution. We might not always agree on it, but it works, you know. So you're looking forward to the new act coming in? Yeah, it should be good, hopefully. It is important for Inclusion Ireland to influence policy change at a national level. We do this by regularly reviewing, commenting and providing input into national policy. Our position on a particular issue finds its base from our work with the Connect Family Network and our work with the Self Advocacy Resource Unit. The General Election Manifesto. In 2015, Inclusion Ireland were responsible for producing two election manifestos. The first election manifesto concentrated on intellectual disability issues, including inclusive education and therapy services. We also collaborated with Down Syndrome Ireland and the Centre for Independent Living on a broader document that included 
sections on the ratification of the UNCRPD and accessibility issues as well. We then put the two documents out for public consultation because we wanted to get the feedback from family members, from parents and also from self-advocates. We then brought the two documents and met with a number of the main political parties and their policy units because we wanted to lobby for change in the general election. The work of Inclusion Ireland would not be possible without the support of many people, too many for us to name here. To our individual members, parent and family groups, self-advocacy groups and those of you who represent us on committee and working groups, academics and legal practitioners, guest speakers and those who have volunteered your time and expertise, we thank you most sincerely.